Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Baka 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 Podcast. Baka. 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 It's amazing how every time you open your mouth, you prove you're an idiot. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a mini soda of Baka Baka Baka. We are normally a podcast that watches an anime. We talk about it to nauseum multiple hours and then we review it and then you talk about it better than we did every other week we do mini sods where we talk about different topics random thoughts that come off the top of our head in the hope of generating even more deep discussion from you uh we have with us my co-host first off we have the oh here we go I, I'm trying to decide how mean I want to be. Uh, <clears throat> hey, it's Jeremy first, so we have the, config- <laughs> the we have the well-known configuration of the Millennium Falcon to my solo, Jeremy. Hey, that, that so ties I'm- into the plot hole thing because it explains exactly why the Millennium Falcon looks the way it looks. How are you oh, doing, Jeremy? Okay. What's that, Millennium Falcon? Oh, yeah, what? it's a it's a spaceship. Oh, right. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, YT thirteen hundred. There, okay. Yes, I do know what it is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, doing good. I played Cave Blazers. I mentioned it a little bit to you guys, but are either of you Spelunky fans? Played it at all? No, I'm more like I just know of it. Yeah, I just know of it. Okay. All right, well, I'm not good at Spelunky, and I don't really enjoy it. <laughs> However, Cave Blayers is a, a version of Spelunky that I do enjoy. It has enough of, a, of an interesting, um, you can set yourself up to begin with, with an interesting arrangement of items and abilities and stuff, and then tr- kind of go through a similar to a Spelunky-like sort of your, your cave diving. It's 2D um, uh, platforming, essentially, in a randomly generated environment, you got to deal with monsters that are running around and you get different weapons and different abilities and stuff and items. And it's, I highly recommend it. It's the only type of Spelunky like game that I'm willing to play the daily run of just about every day. It's a lot of fun. Nice. Then we also have the R2 never telling Luke the origin of his <laughs> father. <laughs> to my prequel movies. Jason, how are you? So what are you doing? What? Somebody. Fine. Are you, are you I, I'm fine. I was trying to get a joke off and it just didn't work out because nobody was swatting me. Um, <laughs> I spent the past couple weeks going from episode one to current with the DBZ abridged. And oh, I had a absolute blast because it kept my sanity from another anime that I was watching. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, it was it was a ride. Uh, those, those guys, man, they know how to make these situations that I remember so clearly into just these really just gems of comedy. And still hold the emotional weight of the original. Yes. Like, but tell nearly the exact same story. Vegeta's scenes are still amazing, but also he's funny in between. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, same with Gohan's. Um, and I, Goku's instant transmissions <laughs> make me laugh every <laughs> single time. <laughs> Cause he's just like, they're in the middle of a conversation. He's like, oh, that's right. God. <laughs> Goku is more of a jerk than I've ever seen in Dragon Ball Z before, and I love it. This is how Goku should be. This is like the distilled um, great way to depict Goku. Because, I mean, we've all had our theories about Goku's kind of a jerk. Yeah. And they they really play it up. The way they embrace that. Uh, Piccolo's dad to Gohan and how they they dodge! Dodge! (laughs) Yes, dodge! (laughs) Uh, have you guys seen the father son Kamehameha, the final episode that they did, yes. um, but set to use a run? No. Yes, I did. I saw that. Okay, I'm going to have to see that. It fits so perfectly. <laughs> it's such an epic. It's like, wow, this scene is so epic. Even with Krillin Zane. 
It's from a person who only has one hand and does sign language. Is that a speech impediment or an accent? <laughs> In the middle of this giant emotional moment. Uh, Krillin owned count, ding, count Dings. Yes. Oh, that was great. So yeah, I caught up on all of that. Um, and also the Kenshiro versus Cell. Uh, that made me giggle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those really good. Uh, my name is Troy, and I... Well, I beat Spider-Man. I did that Call of Duty Blackout thing. But what I'm really into right now is this sitcom called The Good Place. And I can't talk too much about it because there's a ton of spoilers. Uh, but it is about a woman who dies and goes to heaven. And she told her you live this amazing life and you totally deserve to be here. You're probably the best person here. <laughs> and then she reveals that uh, she's actually a horrible person and she has to hide uh, that she's a horrible person while in heaven and she doesn't understand what the fork is going on because you're not allowed to say fork in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we watched the trailer for that after you mentioned it and it looks good. It's, it's also by the people who made Parks and Recs, which... Yeah. No, that makes sense. Uh... <laughs> it, it, it's very clever writing. It's very well done and it has a really good story, which most sitcoms don't. There's a there's there's lore. Um, and... and Instead of going into religions with what you would think would be the easy topic, being in heaven, um, it goes into philosophers and ethics and morals. And, you know, if you lie to save a person's feeling, is that bad or not? And, and it's, it's great. It's a great show. And uh, yes. I slept on it too long, but uh, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm into it now. Okay, let's talk about plot holes. This, this has been on my mind for a very long time. It kind of builds off of what we were talking about Last mini so when we talked about what's an anime responsible to storytell when there's information that doesn't come over from a manga or a light novel, is it my job to go read that in the light novel so it's not a plot hole anymore? Or should the anime have to tell it to me? But I've been thinking about plot holes a lot because certain epic saga films came out and a lot of people complained about plot holes. <laughs> and I'm not going to get into that because that would take over everything. But I've been thinking a lot about what is a plot hole. So let's start there and just see where it goes. Guys, what is a plot hole to you? A great... It, um, for me, it's when something really convenient happens due to a device that I'm just supposed to accept that was never touched on or explained. Um, so for instance, if... I know you guys were talking about how uh, Game of Thrones started just compressing the timeline because uh, it used to be if someone went to travel from one side of the kingdom to the other, they were gone for like a season traveling. Yeah. Or, you, and, or you saw the travel, like every episode, mm -hmm. they went another couple they more. A little farther. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so, they invented fast travel, definitely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but the time the timeline, even though it's compressed, they... they show it appropriately so if it took four months for them to get from here to here but we need to now show them from you know this scene to this scene the rest of the world has aged appropriately it's when a show doesn't show that age it was like two days later and that topic is never touched on again that would be my opinion of like a minor plot hole because you're you you've got how did these people get from here from there? Did they use transportation? Did they have some sort of teleportation? Um, does that even fit within the realm of the story? Um, and I'm having trouble coming up with any of them that really bugged me in anime we've watched recently. But um, uh, that that's kind of, that that's kind of a short synopsis of what I see as a plot hole. Okay, Jeremy, what's plot hole to you? I I think I completely agree with Jason. What a shocker! <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, I think I completely agree. It, it's very much a situation to me when you're just supposed to accept that that something is the way it is, and you were never given any foreknowledge of it, an explanation. Um, I'm thinking specifically of... And it's weird because I almost don't want to call it a plot hole, because it doesn't sound like the right word for it, but I can't think of what else a plot hole would be for me other than just either the exclusion of something that you are now presented with and you're supposed to just accept its presence or um, something disappearing and never being spoken of why it disappears um, or a contradiction. 
but that's not really a plot. Well, like here, here's here's a decent example, I think. Um, and I'm I might I might be way off base, but like so, Steinsky, right? Um, we have a television downstairs that we're not told about through most of the first season. That is the catalyst for all the experiments that they're doing. Even after we find out that it, that that thing is the catalyst, we are never giving given any explanation or exposition on why that's the case. Um, because like a, a microwave with a telephone strapped strapped to it and a tube TV makes time travel. Ugh. That, that that was flimsy. Like I understand yeah. that wasn't really the focus of the anime, but like it was a sciency anime, and they explained a lot of other things. Uh, and even if a lot of other things were like theory, that one they skipped right over. Man, I I the reason I'm asking is because I have a really hard time defining it because I go back and forth between two. One, which is what you guys have said, and the other is what you're presented with on screen could not have possibly happened, but that mm-hmm. something plausibly could have happened off screen, but it's not explained or talked about that. I don't know if that's fully a plot hole. It um, depends on how much it affects the storytelling. I guess so, that's true. So for instance, if someone complains to me that the configuration of a particular vehicle was this way in one place, one put this way in another place, it's never explained. If it doesn't affect the storytelling, then I'm not sure why it's a big deal or why you would consider it a plot hole. Just for something. example. Yeah, it, I mean, I guess that's the, the, the reason why the word plot is so key in it, right? Because it's a hole, it's just not a plot hole. Right. Um, it has to have something to do with Like, I would say the bell was a plot hole yeah, under these, under the definitions you from, provided where from it's the like, anime last week. Yeah. From the anime last week where, it, where it's like, we did not see that happen. There was no reason for her to, to pick that bell up. Ah, uh, okay. So why are we supposed to be okay that she now has it? That kind the of information was never given to us. Yeah. So see there, there, I don't agree. I, I think it's, it was shown that she saw it, so I felt very plausible to me that she would have picked it up. So but I didn't see it as a plot hole. You, as the viewer, have to infer that. Yeah, because why would she think that the bell was important in this moment of getting out with everyone's lives? Because that so, wasn't the only bell there. So when they presented the fact that she had the bell, it didn't contradict anything. And like I said, it was very plausible because I know she saw it. It made a very big deal of her running by it and falling right by her. Um, that when she said, I have it, I kind of had it. I was like, oh, that makes sense. Now, is it a little, I felt it's more, I always say this wrong, Duke Sex Machina? Deus Ex. Deus Ex. Deus? Deus. I hate words. Deus Ex Machina. Um, <laughs> that, they, that they made sure it got <laughs> into her <laughs> hands. Um, potholes that I have complained about in the past was um, ID Zero or Ido. Uh, I remember, I, I don't actually remember the specific ones, but every time I was like, I don't understand how this is possible or this isn't explained. You guys were like, but in the science of this world, I can come up with a reason this would exist. And I was like, oh, I, I guess it's not a plot hole. Um, but then you say something like this bell is, and that feels contradictory. And of course, that means I'm also contradicting myself. To be uh-huh. I, I think the reason why the bell comes off as a plot hole to me is because it is extremely pivotal to the plot and it's in a, a, a compressed a compressed sequence of events that happen very quickly in succession that they have to all fall into place, right? Like you have to have solutions to problems very quickly. And if these solutions are not satisfactory, and then you have something like this, which they kind of weren't. And then you have something like this happen I, because it's so pivotal. I mean, I mean, I don't want to, if people who didn't see it or didn't listen to that episode, I don't want to completely spoil it, but that bell is very important. Mm-hmm. And we really up to this point didn't have any reason to think that bell was important other than it was just a pretty thing that made nice noises that was, you know, jerked around while the person danced. And also let's, let's be honest. It, it wasn't the bells that we were interested in. 
it was the blade inside. So right. did it have well, to be well, bells? We, Could it we be didn't even anybody? know. Well, we didn't even know that there. She didn't. We had no reason to believe she knew. We didn't know. We didn't even know that those bells were important at all until the call where they said, "Oh no, but she needs the bell," and she's like, "Oh yeah, I got it." But the but last time we saw it, it was on the ground. Shouldn't she couldn't she have stuck any sharp object in that pool? Anyways, yeah, that's we're getting off. Topic. <laughs> um, um, well, I, I have I have a question about that. It was never said in plot, but I do feel like it was shown in cinematography that these bells were important. The camera focused on the bells multiple times. Right about well, I'll that. give you that. Mm-hmm. But is that good enough? I don't think so. Okay. They, they were important, sure. And I, how hard would it have been to fit in a couple frames of her running by the bells and scooping them up as she jumped into her dragon? Mm-hmm. I don't think that. I, I, I think that would have been a very reasonable thing to and, add. Like I, said, I think I can agree that that's a better take, but I don't know if I agree that it was a plot hole. Um, the only reason I call it a plot hole was because without the bells, the entire problem cannot be solved. And so Japan perfect. sinks. Yeah, Japan sinks. So like if it's it's so pivotal, pivotal, and you have just this this couple of scenes to deal with this problem, and you tell me it's dealt with instead of showing me how it was dealt with, I have to just accept it. Um yeah, that's why to me it seemed like a plot hole. Just because it was so central and pivotal to that moment immediately. I wish I could remember Ido better so I could remember which one things I complained yeah, about. I can't remember. I can't. Maybe maybe the gun, did I complain? It was too awesome. Oh yeah, that must have been it. <laughs> okay, so let's um, go to Let me let me read this real quick. So a plot hole is a gap or inconsistency in storyline that goes against the flow or logic established in the story's plot. Um, so yeah, any illogical events within the framework of the story or impossible events based on the framework of that story would be uh, considered or, or contradictory. That illogical part's going to be the thing everyone debates, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can, can you justify it? Can you create the logic? And I, I think that's where the, if we're focusing back on the bells, um, that's where the logic part comes comes from because it's like, is it logical that she would pick up something that she did not see as important, or did she see them as important? We don't know, right? You, you know, last last week I talked about how I, when I went to the My Hero Academia movie, a guy st- st- stood up and yelled about a plot hole. Um, that way, that actually happened. It wasn't just a joke. <laughs> no, no, a, a guy literally <laughs> jumped up. Guys, wow! I, I love the anime community, but I had not enough beard on my neck for that crowd. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, that's awesome! <laughs> the and and I I won't go into any spoilers because there's nothing that hasn't been revealed in trailers. But there's a device in there that lets Deku smash without getting hurt. Mm. It's limited use but his point is if this now exists in the universe how do you explain it not existing further yeah. into the universe um but i mean without I, giving away too many details yeah, I, I, I don't want to go any farther mm-hmm. in, into into it but for me i just didn't care <laughs> like <laughs> like it didn't feel like something that there were a million of so that, like, or that would be readily available, and I can logically come up with a reason in my head why he wouldn't have access to it later. Mm-hmm. So I and 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 I also am understanding. I'm watching a movie that's trying to tell a story out of you know to the side, but not ruin anything in 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 the canon. And mm-hmm. I can kind of appreciate that. So that kind of brings us into our second question: How much does it bug you? And, and what, which kind really bug you? Are, is there times where a big plot hole you can be like, you know what? I under, I respect that you tried. It didn't work, but I'm not going to judge you for it. Uh, for me, it, a how how much does it actually affect the plot itself and the characters that I care about? Um, and B, the. I lost lost my train of thought. And the bee's gone forever. 
<laughs> oh, that's right. I it, it really depends on if they are withholding information on purpose before a bigger reveal and mm. how that information is withheld is a hundred percent important. Now I'll give a really good example. Who in Land of the Lustrious is the head monk dude? Yeah, yeah. And without looking know. into the manga, mm -hmm. we have no idea who he is. That's mm -hmm. pretty important to the plot of the story. He's pretty pivotal. Uh, but it's, yeah, did the longer span of things, yes. But the way the story was presented gave you the box without the information mm -hmm. with this little note that basically said, if we get another season, this is going to be a big thing. And I think if it's if it's done in a way that is interesting and it's kind of foreshadowed, like, hey, we're missing information here on purpose because it's going to be a big deal later. Sure, that could qualify as a plot hole, but I think it's more of a teaser. And I think that's what qualifies the two is, was it told irresponsibly because you're trying to get... Uh, uh, okay, here's the, the anime we watched last week. Uh, old lady in the dragon. All of a sudden she can fly it again, uh, but then she starts thinking of someone and now she can't. Uh, I felt it was a huge plot hole. Or the the meaty stuff from the anime, the previous episode that was affected by light, and then it wasn't affected by light. But I'm sure we, I think we brought, I think I brought that up in the previous mini so yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it is, is it lazily being told to get the scene done because they're trying to get the characters from point A to point B? Or are you creating yourself more world building with this teaser where your audience wants to know more? And I think that's a big difference between a teaser and a plot hole. And I think that's what where it'll bother me is if it's uh, something fairly significant to the storyline and you just hand waved it away. Right. Mm -hmm. I think another one was in Violet Evergarden, just the presence of her arms with no explanation, like the degree of technology and things like that for him. And also the way her arms were damaged and destroyed. That was a big like, one for me. Yeah. Those, those things. Now, I, I want to say that for me, it always bothers me. Um, just about any degree of plot hole bugs me if I care about the show I'm watching. And when I'm trying to watch an anime for the podcast, I always try to give it my full attention and I try to care about it and see whether or not it's going to be interesting. And so that means that I'm more likely to care about the plot holes in these anime. But if it's an anime that I'm watching just for fun i might not care as much um also it matters how much i enjoy the world if i'm really immersed in it so the bigger that the worlds get star wars battle tech right as they get bigger and bigger there's going to be plot holes and i'm a very big fan of battle tech and i do a lot of research into the parts of the mechs and things like that because i have my own hobby of building things from them and i like to stay as close as possible <laughs> yes <laughs> happily proudly so I, I like to stay as closely as possible to the source material but sometimes the source material contradicts and yet i find that because i like the environment and the world so much i will make justifications up of like, oh, okay, so this engine must have been used in these three mechs before and then used in this one later. It's probably made by this manufacturer. And I will just make connections because they simply don't exist. But the reason they don't exist is because the world is so big. And so even though I really love the world, I recognize the limitations of a story that big, you're going to have plot holes. And so they don't bother me as much. But um, shorter stuff where I think a story can be told uh, well, told quickly, um, maybe even in those bigger worlds on a smaller scale, you know, individual stories, if they have plot holes, that's going to bug me. Uh, so, yeah. Um, for me, the illogical plot holes, I'm almost always able to let slide. And it's the impossible plot holes that I, that grind my gears. I almost mm -hmm. like to, I like to point out both. <laughs> I, but I almost enjoy finding the illogical ones like, Oh, it, doesn't make sense. R2 didn't tell Luke his entire family story. But oh well. 
Uh, but then, like, when I watched Dragon Ball, and I, I think I brought this up last last time, uh, when Vegeta's standing in space, <laughs> okay, but now in the next Dragon Ball Z movie, they're wearing coats in the Arctic, and I've seen Goku hold his breath when he's in the water, <laughs> and I'm like, wait, that's, that, that's impossible that he was able to do that. Um, or when that, he's f- fighting Beerus in space. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, it, it, those actually grind my gears. And I'm like, oh, that plot hole bugs me. Cause every time I watch this scene, I just, mm. that sounds like a contradiction is it would be what that falls under. Like, yeah. Yeah. This thing contradicts the existence of this other thing. Not, but not mm-hmm. to bring up Star Wars, there was a certain scene where a character pulled out a certain lightsaber that I had just watched blown up five minutes ago. And it turns out it was, it was okay. Plot wise. They actually, it, it was fine. But I yeah. saw it right away and was like, no, you can't do that. Oh, okay, that makes sense. I'm fine. <laughs> uh, but but the, the, those are the plot holes that get me. Like I said, the logical ones, though, I just kind of, meh. Who needs logic anyway, right? Uh, you know, I, I live <laughs> by my heart. <laughs> I'm a Kingdom Hearts fanboy. If you you can't play Kingdom Hearts, if, you, if you logical plot holes bug you, cannot do it. Oh, God. I... I would love to see you introduce Kingdom Hearts to someone that's never heard of it before, and then yeah. try and sell it why they should tri- why they should play it. I think that would be the just pinnacle of my life listening to that conversation. I mean, if they're Disney fans, there's an in. <laughs> if, anybody who's a fan of Kingdom Hearts, you have to check out Narmok Animations on YouTube and his Goodbye Goofy from Kingdom Hearts. I don't agree. I did not like that video. I like the Shrek one. I love the SpongeBob ones. I did not like the Kingdom Hearts oh, one. Of course, because you're a fan. You said anyone who's I a fan should it. check it out. I know, but I like to taunt. Uh, any, any last thoughts on, uh, on plot holes? I, I, thought, I think we covered some, some good stuff and uh, helped me really kind of cement what that is in my mind. Mm. No, I think, I think I'm good. Yeah. That, uh, that cemented it for me. I'm glad we went over like, you know, two weeks ago that one, and then going into this one, because I think it kind of solidifies us as reviewers. Yeah. Um, It's something that comes up a lot when we discuss these anime. Yeah. Our thought processes, because yeah, when our, I love the YouTube comments because it gives us such insight into some of the things that we miss, but we miss it because we see it as a plot hole. And yeah, um, really, really would like to get the viewers input on responsibility. And if a manga explains something, does that count as a plot hole? Yeah. All right. So we are currently watching planet with it is a bizarre anime with 12 episodes. We'll be talking about it next week. I hope you're enjoying it. If you have thoughts on plot holes or anything we've ever talked about, you reach us on our Twitter at Baca, at Baca Podcast. You can reach us on our email, the anime Baca Club at gmail.com. Or you can leave a comment wherever you found this podcast and we'll get back to us, usually in my email. Then I share it with the other guys and they tell me what to say. Um, I like to write our comments back, though, like there's a third party that manages our comments. <laughs> <laughs> like those guys were being silly when they said that. Uh, that's usually that's usually me hi guys <laughs> all right let's say goodbye thanks for listening see you next time sayonara <laughs>